Hi there. Today I want to talk about setting up your American-made mantle clock and getting it running properly. Um, this type of clock has what we call a count wheel strike mechanism. Most American-made clocks do. What that basically means is that on this clock, the strike is always always follows uh, sequentially. In other words, after six, it's always going to be seven. It doesn't matter where the hands are pointing to. But we'll get into that in a minute. Um, first of all. Uh, most first and most important with this clock is choosing the proper location to have it run uh, What you want for this clock? It's designed to go on a fireplace mantle uh, If you do not have a fireplace mantle, which a lot of modern homes don't have um, Then the next best thing is a shelf of its own sort of like this clock over here has on a shelf of its own If you do decide to put on a shelf make sure the shelf is absolutely level and flat and level front side to side and front to back um, this clock has to be absolutely stable. There should be absolutely no vibration for it uh, in order for it to run properly. Because of the pendulum that's on it, um, it can't have anything that's gonna, do, that's gonna uh, disrupt the swinging of the pendulum. So stay away from any type of furniture that has doors or drawers, cupboards, things like china cabinets, buffets, pianos, anything, anything that has that type of uh, vibration would disrupt the swinging of the pendulum. So uh, when you get the clock, the pendulum is not going to be on it. This one's on right now, so I'm just going to take it off so I can show you what happens when we take the pendulum off. The pendulum, uh, without the pendulum on it to stop the clock from gaining a lot of time, it just swings like crazy. So this is the way it'll be, you'll be receiving it, is without the pendulum on it. So the first thing that you have to do when you get home with it is going to be to find a location where you can hook the pendulum onto it. And that's simply done on this one by lifting the clock up and then feeding it through the bottom. That's what the hole in the bottom is for. Have the clock leaning forward slightly until you set it down in place. And then the pendulum gets to be free, swinging freely. Um, once you've got it in a good location where it's absolutely stable and level side to side and front to back, it has to be absolutely level, then you can start the clock by simply giving it a little bit of a shift like so to get it running. If the clock is level, you hear it ticking nice and evenly. If it's not level, then it'll sound like it's limping to one side or the other. So you can tell that this particular uh, fixture that I've got the clock sitting on is absolutely level because it's ticking properly where it is right now. If I was to lift one corner, you'll hear a difference in the way it sounds. That's pretty dramatic, but you can actually hear how, how different it is with that. So once you've got your location and the clock is in, in the proper location, anytime that you have to move it onto a shelf or to a fireplace or anything like that, again, lean the clock forward slightly, pick it up, put it in, in place where you want it to go very carefully. Anytime the pendulum is on there, the clock is very, very fragile. Set it into place, close the door, and if it hasn't started, give it a little shift once again to get it going. If the clock has any type of a wobble to it, like this one has a very slight wobble, you're going to want to shim whatever corner it is that's causing that wobble. Usually using something like a business card is, uh, is adequate to get rid of that little bit of a wobble in it so it doesn't do that anymore. Okay, so now that you've got the clock up and running and set, the next thing to do is to wind it and set it. Winding on this clock is done once a week um, and it needs to be wound completely, fully, to the end, whatever you want to call it. There's no such thing as overwinding a clock. There's no such thing as winding it too tight. Now this clock originally had a key like this, which had two ends on it. One end is to for, for adjusting the timekeeping and the other end, of course, is for winding it. Uh, the new keys for these clocks are no longer available. So what we have are basically two different types of keys now. One with the end for winding it and then one that we use the smaller end for regulating it. But winding it is done once a week and wind it on both sides fully until you can't go any further. This one, this clock winds clockwise. And as you can see, I'm gonna wind it up until it comes to an absolute stop. There's nothing I can damage inside the clock. The only thing that I could possibly hurt would be to bend the key. Okay, so as you can see, it came to a stop and then it, then it rebound. On, the, on this side, it winds counterclockwise, so be aware of that. They both wind inwards towards the center on this particular clock. All the clocks are a little bit different. And uh, Sessions made this clock so that it uh, winds inwards on both sides. And you can see they both come to an absolute stop. So once you've got the clock fully wound, you'll have to do that once a week. Then it's a matter of setting it on the proper time. So make sure you have an accurate timekeeper close by that you can set it to. And you can set the time simply by turning the hands forwards. 
if you have to go past uh, the hour and the half hour, you must stop every every half hour and let this clock strike in time. So if, for example, I was setting the clock at 3 o'clock, here's the procedure I would do. So there. Note on this clock, these hands are fairly fragile, so I'm using the center part of the hands to move it. Also being very careful not to drag the hour hand when I move the minute hand. So don't be very careful, especially when you're crossing over, crossing over the hands that you don't catch the other hand as you go by. So notice I'm stopping every half hour, letting the clock chime, and then getting it to the proper time. So the one thing you cannot do with this clock is turn the hands backwards past the hour of the half hour. If you do that, then you will damage the internal mechanism of the clock. However, if the clock is gained a few minutes uh, over the course of a week, then you can turn the hands backwards inside the 12 and the 6. The rule is on, this, on any type of clock is if you ever feel strong resistance when you're setting the time, never try to force the hands to go. Okay, so I also want to mention to you on this clock that the clock will get out of sync if you if the clock runs down if the clock runs down it will get out of sync in other words it may show uh, four o'clock and strike five times for example so I'm going to show you how to correct that on this clock um, first of all what I'll do is I'll purposely put it out of sync and the way that you do that is just by not stopping to let it uh, let it chime so so now what happens is when the clock comes up to six o'clock We'll show you how to put it back to the proper time. So listen very carefully when it comes up to six, how many times it strikes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then simply move the hour hand now to match what time it is. You can move this hand independently, forwards or backwards. And now when you go back to setting it on the proper time, go back to the minute hand. Stop every half hour and let it strike. Okay, so it's back in sync again. Okay. So, once you've got the time set on it, of course, then it's just a matter of closing it up. But keep in mind that this clock, the accuracy on this clock, because of the year it was made, uh, probably wouldn't be any more than about a minute or so a day. Uh, from the factory, that would have been quite acceptable to be within a minute a day at this, at this time. So it's not going to be as accurate as your quartz clocks or your phone or anything like that. You will have to reset it occasionally. Typically what I recommend is at the very least, every time that you wind it, you need to reset it on the proper time. Okay. The other thing you need to know about is uh, basically regulating. We've done all that as part of the servicing. Um, so it should be, as I say, within the seven minutes a week. If it's outside of that parameter, then it needs to be adjusted and you need to let us know about that because we have a special key that we use to do the adjustment on this clock. Um, whether or not you have a double-ended key, I'm not sure, but uh, you can contact us and let us know exactly if you need any, if you need anything uh, like a key, a special key uh, or anything like that, just give us a call. Of course, if you have any questions, call us and let us know if you have any uh, questions as far as setting it up or running it is concerned, we're always available to answer your questions.